Hi there and uh, welcome to this channel. My name is Gabriel and I will be showing you interesting things to see. If you're already enjoying this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing and you'll encourage me to make more videos. We will begin here in Uppsala, Sweden's fourth largest city, about an hour's drive north of Stockholm. Having two universities, Uppsala is a student city. There's a river, thousands of bicycles, and almost as many choirs. But there is also a rich history going back to the Viking Age and beyond, traces of which can still be seen today. So follow along and I will show you three interesting things to see in Uppsala. We'll start off here in Gamla Uppsala, or Old Uppsala, a few kilometers outside of the city center. These majestic hills, dating back some 1,500 years, are a reminder of Sweden's ancient past and have evoked people's imagination for centuries. Long before Christianity arrived, this was a major center of worship and the seat of the Swedish kings. One of the earliest depictions of Uppsala comes from the medieval chronicler Adam of Bremen. At this point, I shall say a few words about the religious beliefs of the Swedes. That nation has a magnificent temple, which is called Uppsala, located not far from the city of Sigtuna. In this temple, built entirely of gold, the people worship the statues of three gods. Near that temple is a very large tree with widespread branches, which are always green, both in winter and summer. What kind of tree it is, nobody knows. There is also a spring there, where the pagans are accustomed to perform sacrifices and to immerse a human being alive. As long as his body is not found, the request of the people will be fulfilled. These accounts, however, are highly questionable, since Adam of Bremen never saw this place personally. In fact, he never even visited Sweden. What we do know is that this is a place of great beauty and mystery. and that there are three museums to visit, and a cafe. This is the University Library, one of Sweden's biggest libraries, with a collection of around five million volumes. There is also an exhibition where some of their treasures are displayed, including Sweden's most precious book. The Silver Bible was written in the 6th century probably for the Ostrogothic king Theodoric the Great in northern Italy. It's written in the Gothic language that's now extinct and known primarily from this source. It contains the Gospels written in gold and silver ink on thin high quality vellum dyed in purple. This was made to impress not unlike a glossy and very expensive coffee table book. From the year 526, when Theodoric the Great died, it was in unknown hands for a thousand years. It resurfaced in the 1500s, and at the end of the Thirty Years' War, after Swedish troops looted Prague Castle, it was brought to Sweden. A few years later, it was donated to Uppsala University, where it's been ever since. Actually, it was stolen in the mid-1990s, in the plain view of the library staff. Fortunately, the police were able to return it after one month, after receiving an anonymous tip. Some librarians jokingly called it a regular loan, since 30 days is the normal loan period. Our last stop in this episode is at the cathedral. When it was inaugurated in 1435, it had been under construction for nearly 200 years. Its appearance has changed a lot over time. Currently, it measures 118 meters in both height and length, making it the largest cathedral of all Nordic countries. Back in the time of construction, the scale must have been staggering. A 
as it is today. Now, the attraction of this landmark mostly speaks for itself, but some of the most interesting things to see here are perhaps not found in the church itself, but rather here, in the Tower Museum, or the Treasury as it's called. And this relates to one of the darkest episodes in Swedish history, the Sture murders. In 1567, King Eric XIV had imprisoned eight noblemen that he suspected of conspiring against him. And they were being held here, in the Uppsala castle. Two of them had already been sentenced to death, while the others were waiting to appear in court. Their wait would, however, be cut short one morning, when the king, in a fit of rage mixed with insanity, stormed one of the prisoner's cells, stabbed and killed him probably with some help from the guards. He then rushed out of the castle and ordered the hasty execution of the other prisoners. At the end of the day, six noblemen had been slain in a series of brutal events that still raise questions as to their legitimacy and logic. Three of these noblemen belonged to the same family Sturess, and they were buried here in the cathedral. Remarkably, their clothing, what they were wearing at the time of their killing, was saved away and preserved until our days. Now we're gonna go into the elevator and up to the Tower Museum to have a look. I'm not sure we'll be able to see much up there because it's very dark. But we'll give well, here we are, and as you can see, this museum is really dark and uh, doesn't lend itself very well to filming. So you really have to come here and see this for yourself. Here they are. The world's only complete set of male Renaissance outfits. Well, that's all we had for this first episode. I hope you found these three things about Uppsala interesting. Please let me know in the comments. Until the next time, have a good one. Bye.